Hello and welcome to our second paperless tutorial. Let's get started. Now to begin with, Paperless has a standard interface with menu selections at the top. Depending on what you're doing in the software, various options will be active or inactive. Below the menu is the toolbar. Clicking on the buttons perform various functions. The first set of buttons, the Scan button, the Multi-Scan button, and the New Item buttons create new documents. Clicking on the Scan button scans multiple documents and creates a single file for each page. The Multi-Scan button scans multiple documents into a single file. The New Item button allows you to create a new document on the fly. Now say for instance you forgot to get a receipt for taxi fare. Simply click on the New Item button, double click on the New Document to bring up the text editor, enter the information into the text editor, and close the window. If you wish to save your changes, click the S yes button. Now the second set of buttons allow you to open buttons in your paperless library, either via the Open button or the Quick Look button. The third area allows you to share documents. The Email button allows you to send documents that you've selected via email. The Next button area allows you to select between various views. The Combo view, the Detail view, and the Icon view. Clicking on the button switches to the specified view. To the right of the View buttons is the Hide Details button, which allows you to hide the Details area, which is the furthermost area to the right. To the right of the Hide Details area is the Search area. Entering information into the Search Area field and then clicking on the Search button to the right produces a list of matching items in the View area, which is in the center of the paperless window. You can customize the toolbar and add more buttons. From the View menu, choose Customize Toolbar. Now the available buttons that are not on the toolbar are to the left and those buttons already on the toolbar appear to the right. Click on the button or buttons you want to add and then click on the right arrow button. Now if you want to change the order of the buttons on the right, simply highlight the button you want to move and then click on the up or down arrow button. When you're done configuring your toolbar, click the OK button. Let's move on. Over to the left is the view area which displays the contents of your library. The Library view displays everything in the paperless library. Now, the Inbox view shows you the files you've scanned or imported but haven't processed. Processing an item removes it from the Inbox. To process an item, simply click on the item in the Inbox, go over to the Details area, enter the details information, and then when prompted, click on the Done button at the top of the Details area. Now below the inbox is the recent documents area which displays the documents you processed within a certain date range. Below the recent documents area is the collections area in which you can create various folders or various collections of files depending on how you want to organize your library. Last but not least, down at the bottom of the views area are three buttons. The first button allows you to add a collection. The second button displays a list of menu actions. The third button is a calendar button that displays a calendar. The dates that are highlighted show you that you have documents that have been imported on that particular date. Now let's talk about the details area. The details area over to the right allows you to enter information about your document. Most of the information is self-explanatory. There are a few fields that require additional information. The type field allows you to choose between document types such as contacts, receipts, or documents. There are two different date fields. The date field is the date on your document or receipt. Now the import date is the date that the document was scanned or imported into Paperless. Remember, enter the information in the fields and then click on the Done button. Now Paperless allows you to configure the details area in a way that's meaningful to you. This includes allowing you to add fields, items within the drop-down lists, and the way that the information is displayed in the details area. From the View menu, choose Show Library Configuration. The Library Configuration window is comprised of several tabbed areas. The General Fields tab displays merchants and titles, categories, and subcategories. To add a new item, click on the Add button at the bottom of the column, enter the name, and then click on the OK button. If you want to rename an item, simply highlight the item, click on the Edit button, make your change, and then click on the OK button. 
If you want to delete an item, highlight the item, click on the Delete button, and then confirm the deletion by clicking on the Yes button. The Payment Methods tab displays payment methods. When you click the Add button in the Payment Methods tab, you'll see three fields. The first two are required and the Notes area is optional. Now let's say you want to pay for something via MasterCard. Add MasterCard in the Name field, use the pull-down menu to select the credit card option, and then click OK. Remember that entering the payment methods requires you to add not only the payment method, but also the type of account. The next tab is the Custom Fields tab. Let's add a custom field. Now say you wanted to add a field that specifies the due date on a bill. Click on the Add button. Now enter the field name. Next, use the pull-down menu to select the date field, and then finally click the OK button. Now keep in mind that if you want your custom field to show up in the details area, you'll need to specify it in the next tab area, which is the data types area. The data types area is where you'll configure your fields for each of the data types in the details area. You have three default types, the contact, document, and receipt. All of the available fields appear in the middle column and only the fields that you want to display in the details area are in the fields to show column. Now say we wanted to add our due date field. First, locate it in the Available Fields column. Next, click on the right arrow button. Finally, drag and drop the field in the order that you'd like it to appear in the Details area. You can also remove fields in the Details area by clicking on a field in the Fields to Show column and then click on the Remove button which has the arrow pointing to the left. The final tab in the Library Configuration area allows you to add specialized tags that you can use for additional filters. When you're done customizing your fields, click on the Done button. Now if you'd like to have Paperless populate a sample set of merchants and categories in the Library Configuration area, from the Help menu, choose either Add Default Merchants or Add Default Categories. A window will appear confirming that the merchants and or categories have been entered. We need to talk about one other aspect to the library configuration area, and that's being able to export any financial information into a program such as Quicken. To do that, you'll need a list of your categories and subcategories from Quicken, and the categories need to be identical to the categories in Quicken, including any dashes, colon, spaces, and capitalization. You can also add categories and subcategories into the fields in the details area as you go along, and they'll automatically be added into the library configuration area. Okay, so that's it for our second tutorial. For more information, consult your user's guide. You can also email us via the website or check out our knowledge base under the support section. We're happy to help. For now, though, make your office a paperless office.